Hi everyone and welcome back. So in this video we are going to baseline our microservice which is going to be built in Nest.js Node.js. So what we are going to do is we are going to take the help of this CLI which I think I already have installed. I can check my current Node.js version. It's Node minus V. We are using V1618. What I will do is we can generate the new application using Nest CLI command. And I will say is auth service. Let's say auth service we already have. So I will just rename it and then I will change the name. So what it is asking, okay, what package manager you want to ask? We are fine with npm and it will create this folder. Okay. What we can do is we have to move this folder inside the packages. Actually, we have to run this command inside the packages. And then we will delete the auth service. We will start using auth service one and we will just rename it. So when you want to do it, you should do it in the packages folder. And we are going to build a nest.js microservice. So if we talk about this structure, what it is going to have. This is a simple service. Okay. What all things it will contain inside this inside this? It will have a Docker Compose configuration. Docker Compose, let's uh, put something, Docker Compose, YML, it will have a Docker file and let's just uh, basic code. Change the font, okay. It is going to have a Docker file, Docker Compose file and uh, then Prettier, ESLint RC and all these configuration files. And we are going to use type ORM. So type ORM is a ORM. So it will have a ORM config.ts to run the migrations because uh, this we are going to run on Docker and it will use nest.js. Okay, this will run on the Docker. And we are going to have another docker container that will be for postgres and all both both of these will be inside a one single docker compose network okay so this is pretty much we are going to build when you do docker compose up it should be able to spin up both these containers one is for the postgres which is a database and another is for our node.js app so we are going to write a docker file for node.js app and uh, inside docker compose we can define okay there is another container which is postgres we are going to pull the postgres image and when you do docker compose up it will spin up both the containers and then we will establish a communication between both of these application we will boot from our default database when you do docker compose up okay so what we will do quickly we'll move this package inside this and auth service we can just for now delete it we can start using auth service one auth service package.json i mean this is just the default okay we can just use the same conventions we are using here tks sharma so package name will be auth service okay it has some default scripts has been added, some default package. It's using uh, Nest.js 9.0 version. We are just, we just created a bootstrap application. And if I just do npm run build, then it should be able to build all the application include the, including the auth service. Because in auth service, we have this build command, nest build command, right? Even if you do npm run start inside this, it should be able to spin up this application uh, because it's just a hello world app. If you see the source src, and then it's just a controller, then one module, one service. This service it has injected inside a controller, and this is a simple route, get route. So when you expose this, when you do npm run start, it is just going to start this application. So if you go to packages, and auth service npm 
run start it will just start the basic hello world app which is mapped on localhost 3000 and forward slash so if i just show you yes this is simple there is no swagger and all has been added okay now let's uh, create a baseline service which will which we are going to use everywhere or all other microservice also so first of all we are going to set up uh, the containers and because we are going to have postgres as another container and this nest.js service which is a node.js microservice is going to talk to nest.js data uh, sorry postgres database for the database entities and tables so we'll start building stuff inside this before that uh, Yes, RC, we have a couple of things already added. Nest CLI JSON. Okay. So TS configuration. Uh, it is using common JS and all. Because in this application, we are also going to add uh, end to end test cases. So let's uh, create a TS config for end to end test cases. So it will be like TS config e2e.json. We will see what is the use of it. It is actually going to extend the TS config, but for test cases, if you want to override the definition of anything, then you can use the TS config end to end. It is using the base TS config. If you want to override anything, you can do it in the te uh, TS config E2E, and then we are going to add lot of uh, scripts inside package.json we are going to introduce lot of other packages which, packages which are required because it's not enough we just a boilerplate code has been added now what all packages we need first of all the packages we need is uh, we have common core cli testing and all these things we need a json web token let's start adding them i mean i can just share a uh, package.json but let's start adding them what all things we need we need type forum postgres swagger ui express okay uh, we need uh, maybe uuid also p4 moment for the logging and generating the timestamp helmet is for adding the security let's add these and then there are a couple of more like we have to use add nest.js type orm because we are using type orm as a orm library to talk to the database so type orm and nest.js type orm and postgres these three libraries are required and we are going to use swagger so a couple of uh, types also we need to add for the json web token and we also need to use dot env all these modules so what i will do is i will just update my package.json and then i will explain you what all things i am adding as the dependencies okay i mean it will take some time meanwhile we will remove this we will move this just config just config.js outside so i will just remove this definition from here from package.json we are going to have a just config separately so i will just put it the just config inside this this is simple just config and uh, we are going to have a test folder we will talk about all these things like how to run the unit tests end to end tests and all okay some dependencies has been installed in our package.json we are using latest typescript versions and a couple of more packages json web token i think we have installed because once user logs in we are writing auth service we need to generate token json web token uh module aliasing i will talk about this and express express basic auth to secure your swagger 
documentation let's just perform um, next js figure okay let's add these more these will be added as a de uh, dependencies uh, because these we need next js type orm and postgres type orm and then you can see that these has been added couple of more modules like class validators i don't see any of these modules so i will just add couple of them class validator class transformer and then i will run the npm install because for validating the u input i mean you are going to write a service which will have a request response to validate the request next just use class transformer class validator and then fbgs script can be used to validate the node.js version for our application swagger ui express i think we already have swagger ui express is installed uuid winston we may need we can add winston for logging i mean and dot env dot env cli and if we talk about do we have everything platform express swagger type rm for doing some health checks and for adding the event emitter we can install these packages nestjs emitter and then uh next js terminus to do the to write a health check api which will check the status of your database i'm using it for all my services i mean uh it will just give you a health check rest endpoint which will check the health of database and uh, your system and then you also need to expose some types and for pretty error and for conventional commits and all these things we are already using outside if you see the root package.json we are already using these commit lint all these libraries if you are writing a script then you can either add these dependencies in your own microservice but we are using larna and we are committing from the root package i mean from the root folder so it is taking care of the running eslint and running this uh, commit lint for our application managing the change change log and all i mean prettier right and all we are going to run on the root of the project so we don't need these dependencies added in each and every service so we can skip those like we don't need to add the husky and all these dependencies i think just also we can skip adding this because just is already there or at the root of the package and this might be using just config we can either extend it we can extend this configuration because when you run npm run test Lana at the root package it actually runs the test on all the packages <coughs> right uh, this failed somewhere we'll talk about it because uh, it, it is using the just config of this and it is looking for this set env file which is inside test so we can add it in auth service test what this is doing is this is just uh, populating because for running the test environment we need a different environment test files right so what i can do is i can run the test again so now it is running this in auth service 5 out of 5 succeeded 1 failed that is fine i think it's uh, failing from uber eats admin but that's not our api app api app is running fine so we are good okay now what what all these things you need to worry about when you write a microservice all those things let's take a look a uh, little bit let's remove it so first of all you should follow the 12 factor principles like you should inject the configurations 
you should isolate the environment zero config environment uh, your environment should be decoupled i mean 12 factor principles which uh, you can explore there is already a 12 factor app principles that i already created a separate playlist covering all these things that the dependencies should be isolated you should provide a configurations per environment you should be able to deploy that microservice using build release run process port binding concurrency logs and all all those things should be there in your service okay uh sorry let's to come here now this is the independent microservice we added some dependencies now what we are going to do let's see if anything is missing we can just do npm run build in that package let's for now work on this only and we are build and what we are going to do uh, we are going to now populate the docker files docker containers and all because there are two things we are going to have either we can have the root docker file or docker compose file for all these services because there will be multiple microservices for now let's focus on doc auth service then we will move the docker compose file outside okay how the docker compose file looks first of all i will just talk about this we'll create a docker compose file for this what this docker compose file is this is just a configuration that it is saying i want to run two containers and uh, the node.js container will look for the build a docker file which is in the root current directory so we need to have a docker file here i will create a docker file for this I mean the currently these are just two containers i can run easily these applications without using docker but you should learn docker and you should see how it really works docker file i think there is a typo because uh, we can we can set up the whole app set up set up the whole microservices one two three four five services together using docker compose and docker file so docker compose is dependent on this current docker file is in the current directory it's going to map the volume of this current project with this uh, app directory in the container environment file we need to have a dot env file where we are going to set everything env and env example let's say example file env just a play, env dot example just a placeholder and in the env let's say what all configurations we are going to put in the env is uh, let's say node env because in the application we are going to use this environment local port 3000 all those things we are going to fetch from the process dot env that we will see how we write the code okay and uh, tests tests are some of the end-to-end -end tests are already written we are going we can just use them and what i'm doing is for the tests uh, if you look into this just config because we have just config here also for uh, tests it will look for this set of files set of file is nothing but we also need to have a env.test file what the env.test will do let's say for test we are going to have a test database to run the end-to-end -end test cases so the database url will be different so env.test we will put the env test here so our integration tests we are which we are going to run locally will point to the test database and through the docker compose we are going to create two different database one is application database uh, user database auth service db and auth service test db okay so we will just add few more integration tests and all we are going to have a docker ignore so that we can ignore the files which we don't want to put inside docker container and prettier eslint rc we already have we can have a just config for end-to-end -end test cases so this just config like uh, there are end-to-end -end test cases unit test cases and all so all service end-to-end -end test cases we can have it 
why why we need to have a separate files because end to end test cases may have a different configuration because here you need to look for the test regex e2 is spec for the default just config what you will look for is spec.ts so we, we are actually trying to build some basic boilerplate design for all our services so we can adopt this and we can use this as a standard definition standard version now what we are going to use for the database and all let's talk about it so here we are going to explore a little bit about type ORM let me get okay type ORM is actually ORM and type ORM is a library with the help of that you can actually talk to any database mysql postgres uh, oracle or i think it provides some connection providers so you need to just add this database provider in your nestjs code so that you can start talking to the database we are going to create entities like this like user entity um, session entity whatever the entity you create and then you will just write your services you will uh, you will access the repository of this entity and then you will try to just do a find dot get update delete whatever the basic operations i'm not going into much detail because my not it's our objective is not to talk about how the type rm works but to write the auth apis okay coming back here so we have basic setup there docker compose file we can also have a we also need to have a docker compose override file because what this docker compose file is talking about simple okay we need two containers node and postgres container but how we can provide a runtime configuration to the postgres container so that postgres container can create a two different database api database and api test database so for that we can use a docker compose override file so i will create a docker compose override inside the same directory and i will talk about all these one by line by line what we are doing so this is api data let's say and let's say this is auth api auth api testing okay what this docker compose override contains it just uh, some additional commands additional instructions because in override you can define port mapping volume binding and runtime argument you wanted to pass to the container okay npm run start this is the start command which will execute some environment variable and port mapping the host port is 3000 and the container port similarly postgres i wanted to pass these uh, postgres standard environment variables so these these two database i wanted to create with user is api and password is uh, development pass and the volume mapping i'm doing in docker utils we got to do is i'm going to create a script so these are like uh, init script you can have inside docker compose for the container that will execute once you do docker compose up so i will just do one suggestion if you are not familiar with docker you, you can just learn a little bit about it so in docker utils we are going to have a script that will help us to create these two database it's not like okay you just pass the database name and it will automatically create it we have to what we are doing is we are creating so docker utils is a your host directory is going to map with the start script of this container okay so inside docker utils we can create a file docker entry point and most of the applications when you write a docker compose for postgres or for database we do it what we do is whenever we do docker compose our database should be created with this username or password otherwise what you will do is you will go manually to the container you create the database set the permissions lot of a lot of headache and you will see a connection issues okay admin user id password is incorrect and all and you struggle there I, that's what i mean to say so docker entry point init.db this is the start script of the postgres container that we are going we are overriding with the docker entry point.sh and what it will have it's just a simple script i have written that this script will just create these two database and one user for it 
user and password which we have provided in docker compose override this is the api development pass and these are the two database so once you do docker compose up it will map this because this is the host directory this is the volume mapping like this is the port mapping this is the volume mapping and this is where the the data will be stored inside a docker volume and this is the port mapping host port is 5434 container port is 5432 okay so this is our docker configuration and docker file now you can also do couple of more things through this uh, entry point or the start script using docker files in docker file also so what my docker file looks like for the node.js because for uh, postgres we are fetching it from the docker hub but here we are using node 12 we may upgrade it to node 16 working work directory copying the package .json and log.json inside app doing npm install and then we also have an entry point is a directory init.sh this is the local directory we are having this is also another way in which you can override the start script of a node.js container okay and what this script contains because why i'm doing this first of all if you try to understand if you try to read it from here when you do a docker compose of what you want this node.js container should be up and running this database should be there so that you just need to go localhost 3000 host port and you can see uh, your APIs this is your postgres right so what, what these start scripts will do create database and in the node.js I want to run the migrations these are two import, really important tasks. Why? Because let's say in your uh, service, microservice, you, you can call it, you have a user database. And you, first of all, you are creating a database manually, but we, we are using now this init script. Through that, we will be able to create a database. But now we are using migrations, type ORM. Either you use a type ORM as a framework, SQLize, Prisma, all these things provides you a migration strategy. You can run the migration and you can populate the tables in the database so that your APIs can go and directly talk to your database. Otherwise, what you will do is in the legacy world, you copy the user table SQL, put that in the database and create the table manually. But you can write a migration and run the migration before even your Node.js app starts running. So you will have a tables already. This is your Node.js and here we are going to run the migrations. So you can have a start script for this node.js container which will just check okay everything is fine and if and i can run the migration so what i'm going to do is i'm going i have created an init script for it init.sh what it is doing is if type ORM migration is the environment variable which i'm going to pass if it is enabled then i'm going to run this script and then we need to define what this npm run execute migration run migration will do through our package.json it will actually use type ORM migrations and it will run the migrations on the container so our table gets created uh, over there okay these are just uh, snippets i'm just copying pasting what it is doing is if npm install is enabled it will run these commands in, on the container if the type ORM migration is enabled it will run the migration that's it so if you see this here from here we are passing both the argument npm install and type or migration okay so this is pretty much let's uh, play with a little bit on the docker side first of all you can install this uh, docker plugin on the vs code that will give you the all the volumes network images everything compose up what it is doing it is building the docker image from the docker file so here is our docker file for the auth service based on docker file it is running all the instructions and npm run build npm install I, it is creating an individual user node which is executing these scripts that's it okay 
you can see right now it is running the fourth instruction npm install so it will take some time for now we can talk about docker compose viable so there are two commands docker compose up which will create all the containers defined in the docker compose viable currently there are two containers node and postgres i mean uh, you might be thinking this is all you are not able to understand or something but we are not talking in depth about docker and docker compose these are just two services and we are doing docker compose up which should be able to create these containers okay because it is executing some instructions docker entry point npm run build might have been failed so let's see I just run npm run build manually then mode failed build failed because we just installed some dependencies and we are trying to create the image for that okay auth service build app nest build it is also executing nest build maybe let me clear the images first so what i can do for now is just a clear out using docker compose down and this is i think the image we we'll just remove it and we also have volumes so from here you can check uh, if there are any active containers or the images docker compose up and let's see docker compose up or maybe we will do it at the end because currently we don't know where it is going to fail we don't have these all scripts defined in our package.json like npm run start prod and all npm run start do we have it yes in package.json npm run start command we have it and docker file it is doing we can just do a simple npm run start okay okay we should be running this inside packages cd auth service uh, this is a little bit strange what i will do is i will remove all the node modules sometimes it happens if your node modules are not installed properly package log json npm install okay we will we'll, uh, revisit that part there may be a corrupt dependency because locally we are able to build the application now in source what we are going to do because we are doing just a baseline so we can leave it like this for now uh, here we are writing tests this is environment what basic thing we need is we should be able to connect to the database so we are using postgres database and we are using typo rm so if you want to explore what is type ORM and all type ORM is a ORM which we are going to use for our services and we need to have a type ORM config this is how you define the entities this is how you access the repositories and access the entities doing find 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 when you see all these operations okay so if you want to use type ORM then obviously you need to have a type ORM config in our folder which looks like this i will talk about this what it is so we are going to have type rm config uh, which will because type rm config needs a lot of information where are you going to define the typescript entities where the migrations has been defined where the subscriptions we are we don't need it but at least the migrations and entities so i put the default directory is something like source inside this i will create app then inside this we i will have a domain inside domain i will just create because this is the authentication domain other than that inside src i will have a storage i will have a lot of folders like config for config management or db or database like so not db we can use a storage and database is one of the type of storage and inside this database you can have migrations 
and then you write your migrations type or migrations which will be just a classes saying okay create this table uh, alter this table and all those kind of migrations we are going to put inside this which we will do uh, in the later phase but this is orm config what it is saying is what is a uh, database type because type orm can connect to mysql postgres or different type of database uh, this is the database url which you need to have in the process.env ssl like if you are connecting to the production database then ssl will be enabled if it is not local logging through all the entities migrations and all if you have already used type orm then it's very simple to understand now uh, next thing we are going to talk about is uh, we have ts config already created ts config build e2 and ts config json so it is just looking into the typescript code and it is just building and generating the dist folder for us okay you can see now uh, what else we have database so once you spin up these containers what will happen it will create two containers for us I think there is some issue with this version first of all we need to fix the this, this docker compose up so what we need to do mode 777 sometimes there is a permission issue is also there docker utils because you are overriding the entry point of your docker okay uh, we can just do docker compose up it might be a possibility because we are using the latest version of nest.js not compatible with the node.js 12 in that case we need to use the updated node buster slim image which can be node 14 or 16 you can see node buster slim because currently my local context environment is using node 614 earlier i was using nvm use v16.18.0 here the build is fine and you are now you are running a container right so what is this container container is just a linux environment first of all it is installing the node 12 version for us and then it is building it so let's say if i if you want to replicate it then we can switch to 12.0.0 if i have it and we have list so if i just use this version then i will reproduce it first of all i need to install it okay now using this then i feel if i do and run build yes we got the same error right what we are getting inside a container so we are able to reproduce it so we know the reason why our build was failing in our container so if i just talk about and i just use 14 14 should be good in that case i need to delete the image because image has already been created and if i don't delete it then it's a problem right docker compose down it's fine you can just do to delete all the resources which has been created with this docker compose down and postgres do we have this image volumes we haven't created any i'm not sure let's say docker compose up with this image now it is using node 14 buster slim and this image really exists i put somehow put the name correct and now it is doing the same thing copying the package root json npm install because we are using nestjs latest version which is 9.0 i guess and that's not compatible with the node earlier version which is node 14 and now it is doing the say it is executing all the instructions we have here npm install copying this entry point file to the docker container copying everything to the app directory doing a build exposing 3000 port so that the container can expose the 3000 host port and now it is executing nest build oh that's fine we passed all these phases and there is some other error but for now we are good uh, what is this error 
exited so node node js service exited here type or migration disable the files belonging to the database system will be postgres okay we can now if you want to see the the logs of this container what actually happened here missing script migration run right i know this will happen because we don't have these migration scripts already in place so what we can do is we can first place these migration script which is talking about okay how to run the migrations and all so if you talk about uh, simple migration scripts using type orm so in the package dot json these all the scripts are fine which is running the tests and all this is what i'm going to add these all are like type type or a migration generate if you want to create a new migration run the migration revert a migration or synchronize the migrations with the entities then you will use all these things so what i will do is i will try to rerun this container let's say start and i will check the logs still i think no luck uh, what happened is type or a migration run all pending migration missing required argument data source okay that is correct because currently we don't have in this env file we don't have the database now what will be the database url how it looks like if you look into our docker compose override file we have a database api if you check the logs here of this container we already have a database created you can see auth api testing and auth with the username same as we have provided dev and uh, api and development pass so we need to pass this database url so this is really a database url which our node.js container can access to the postgres container you can't use local host here because you are track you, your one container is talking to another container under the docker network okay now if i just run this again because how my orm config look like in the orm config process.env or what you can do is you can populate this environment variable database url because what is happening you can see docker compose yml it is populating whatever you put in the dot env in the process dot env okay this is env file so inside dot env whatever you are past passing node env local port it will put that thing inside a process dot env so that your orm config because orm config is running the migration it will be able to get what is your database url what is your node environment and all from this dot env and this would be correct like uh, if we are doing any mistake then it uh, will not be able to connect uh, it should be auth api we can check from docker compose override okay this is the api database this is the testing database we will use now we can give it another try and let's say docker compose down up and looks like there is some slight success or so still missing the database all pending migration okay let's see it is executing this type or a migration run that is fine type or a migration run inside node container because it is using this package.json type or a migration run each so this is the command it should execute let's go to our docker compose and see what is there inside this entry point npm run migration run right so migration run is actually a package.json script which is here type or migration run okay so what it will do is it will look for this orm config.ts and it will execute it so what we can do is npm run build first
okay again the version issue nvm use v16.18.2 so because it has already copied the instructions so we need to create the this container again i'm just talking about this again and again so that uh, i don't miss anything i want i have to delete this image because i didn't put the orm config at that time and in the container there is no orm config so that's why it is not able to run the migrations it is saying uh, there is no data source available so it's a good exercise for today so now docker compose up because without this orm config uh, this uh, container won't know like which is the data source it needs to connect to and where are the where are the my migrations have been kept migrations are in, inside dist folder dist source i mean now it can report that there is no directory until unless we put any migration inside that folder so that will be the the error which we are aware and then from there we'll move forward so here what we are doing is we are creating two containers postgres and node.js container postgres container is successfully running it is creating two database and now we should be able to connect to that i don't want to fail this time okay again all pending migration runs all pending migration missing required argument data source maybe it is not getting so what you can you can actually go inside the container also we will see this thing later also uh, without starting i mean uh, how your container has already died so you cannot access that container type or a migration run the only problem is this database url is not available that time when it is running this <coughs> but i already made it sure that database url should be there through this dot env okay that i will check and we will we'll talk about it so what actually we have done is now we have this container there are two containers postgres container and node.js container they are should be able to talk to each other and what we will do is with this baseline code we should be able to uh, talk to the database and write our migrations entities and all so here we are going to put our all the code inside domain source app domain here we will create auth controller auth service auth module and then some auth strategies like jwt strategy and all and middlewares so here we can create a different different modules what all these are inside src app domain uh, we can have a inside source we can have a logger okay. we can have a logger storage and here we have main.ts file this is running the application on 3000 port it should be using process.env.port it's bootstrap in the application and this is the root module it is using controller and service this is our default controller and this is service but we are going to have a domain module type or a modules we are going to add inside the domain module so that and we are going to pass this database url which we have in in env because that is enough just you don't need to pass uh, username password port and all separately just pass the database url okay to debug that error what i did is uh, i downgraded the type rm package json i mean type rm version to somewhat like uh, this is my type rm 8.0.2 and uh, what i'm doing is now i'm generating the the node modules using the node version which is on my local which is 14.5.0 okay and I'm also using the same image 14.x for the docker container I mean you can also install you can also generate these node modules on the container why I'm not doing it because it takes a lot of time here I have already have a script that when you enable the npm install enable true in that case it will install the dependency based on the node version in the container itself while bootstrapping the container which I'm skipping 
I'm generating the node modules and do then same node modules are being used by the container because I'm skipping this particular step and then I'm moving to the type ORM migration. So due to the, the version mismatch of type ORM with the node.js compatibility that issue was there but I think now it should resolve as I have tested it docker compose up so it is starting the node container it is running the type ORM migration and then it is running the database container and then you can see I mean there is nothing much to run the migrations the migration folder is empty it is running the migration which there is nothing and then it is doing nest start because after that what you are doing the script you are running is the npm run start which is there in your package json npm run start which is doing nest start okay and here you can see we are we are having these two containers and these two containers both are running one is running the postgres another running another is running uh, the nest js app so this is just uh, you can say hello world nest js app running on docker and i try to explain couple of things uh, which are really important first of all the docker setup you can have this docker compose at the root of the packages so that you can now what you need to do you just need to increase the number of services here postgres here you can just say instead of node it can be auth service same you will use here then uh, order service card service checkout service you can just copy it but if you move it then you have to use this relative paths okay this env is from that folder something like that and the current path of that particular service will map to the app of that container and every microservice will have a docker file and docker compose docker file and docker compose and override will be at the root and then you can also spin up multiple database like here you can just do a comma separated these you can just generate n number of database through this docker compose because docker compose we are using for the local setup on the, the productions or staging environment you are going to deploy these services individually and then they are going to expose the interfaces okay so important part here is we are using larna and these are the this is the docker file and uh, this is the dot env file through which we are exposing these values like uh, node env port database url so that these values will be available for the type ORM, ORM, ORM config this ORM config is responsible for running the migrations here it should have the process.env database url as we have already populated that through the docker compose yml it will be there and a couple of things we are already running the tests unit tests are there we will also write the unit tests and here we are going to write now the logger module config module app module domain module and we are going to create a simple baseline configuration this is just a boilerplate hello world now to make it appropriate like now we need to just add the auth controller auth services auth repositories auth domain right and then auth strategies for the documents also we can add there we can expose the swagger documents so here src app domain inside domain you can have what else you have you have the controller you will create services controller services module i mean we are going to have a root module me one single module and then this is domain module.ts here you will import all the modules controllers and services for now we are just going to have a auth controller so your folder structure can be you don't need these three folders because we have only one entity but you can put auth controller session controllers and auth module all the services will come inside this and then if you have any core module which will have all the your middleware interceptors and all middleware interceptor pipes i mean these are all our building blocks of nest.js uh, common interfaces okay you can also put some helpers 
utilities so this is the core which will be used by this any module which we are going to put inside this we can also have inside domain a shared module so here you will have a shared module shared services which can be used by any module we have i am just putting this domain module will have a auth and inside auth we can move this controller because auth will have a controller module and services okay rest it will be core modules these are actually shared modules these will be at the root level of domain okay and then you have a config document storage inside storage you will have a database inside you will create a database module database provider uh, database interfaces so say db dot module dot ts here you use type or a module for that here you can create a database service so this kind of configurations we are going to build similarly config module config service the swagger we are going to use a nest js swagger here we can use a winston logger or just a simple debug verbose logger or something like that and then we will create a we will start our code which is writing actual controller services and all which can expose this feature of creating a token based on the valid user name password writing the entities all those things we will put inside this auth there will be another folder entities here here you will put all the database entities we are going to have a couple of tables inside it and then same path you need to provide i mean entities we do, really don't need to provide but in the orm config you need to provide the whole path where your entities are kept this can be in multiple folders like inside domain there is a auth and then auth entities some other do some other some other module like auth user all these things and migrations okay so this is just a basic setup we are able to run our application on the container and here using this because this is hosted i mean host port is 3000 and container port is 3000 so if i do tell me hello world why because our host is talking to the container 3000 port and we should be able to do access all the apis from that okay so let's see in the next video we will start writing all these modules and services